Hello, this is Bible Billy O, wanting to uh, call out to you and wish you a, uh, a blessed Monday after Christmas. I'm going into work for a little OT today, and I'm grateful for that. Um, I was looking for some comfort and support uh, in Corinthians today, and the Apostle Paul certainly had a lot to say uh, about how we can live uh, victorious in a world that's really not our home. We we ought not become so uh, earthly minded and so bodily minded uh, that we forget we are citizens of another world. Um, I love how he says in Second Corinthians, it's really a love letter, uh, follow up to the first letter, where he said that this body he said is like a tent. He said it's a, a tent that's an earthly home that will someday be destroyed. He says, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And in this tent, he said, we groan. How many of you can relate as our body is playing cruel tricks on us as we get older? And um, yeah, I don't mean to make uh, fun. You know, uh, some people are going through some real um, health concerns. Some have even passed away and there's family that we're remembering um, and it's it's a good promise that Paul gives us. He says that we should take good courage, he said, because we know that while we're at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. But to be absent from the body, we're present with the Lord. And there's no place that our loved ones would rather be than there. We get a little selfish. We want them to come back. And that's understandable because we love them and we miss them. But uh, Paul also had a lot to say about addiction and addictive behavior. Some of you know I shared with you how I went through a, a long uh, battle, and it was through the not really 12 steps, but where they came from is the nine Beatitudes, and Celebrate Recovery helped me to recognize I was powerless in my own uh, ability, my strength. Uh, to, to deliver myself from some of the addictive ways. It's an amazing thing. The human mind is like a supercomputer. It remembers those pleasure centers in the brain, how it felt when we indulged, overindulged in certain things. Maybe it was overeating. Maybe it's our attitude. Maybe it was the way that we uh, responded to people. And it's just um, something we never were able to rein in under control. But it just, you know, hey, that's the way I am. And I, I hope you can deal with it. Well, sometimes those addictions can be even more destructive um, when I think about substance abuse and opioids today. And um, the enemy uh, just loves uh, to use things, uh, drugs in particular. It's interesting in the Greek that the old word, uh, actually the same word used for sorcery, is a pharmakeia, I believe. And that's where we get our word pharmacy from. And so not all drugs are bad, but anything again in its excess can become a master over us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul warns about how we ought not, not let anything become our master. Um, it's interesting how God's given us all of our desires that are God-given desires um, within the Godhead. They're available to us. We pray, God, meet our needs. Uh, the Lord's Prayer talked about not only meeting our needs, but delivering us from temptation and delivering us from evil. So he always provides a way, and he doesn't want us to be um, consumed by something that can uh, have mastery over us. Again, it's in chapter 6 of the first chapter where he talks about, well, how anything that's done in excess, even though he says in Christ he's free and all things are lawful to him, they're permissible to him, but they're not all helpful or not all expedient. He says, I won't let anything dominate me. Food, he said, for instance, he says the stomach was made to digest food and food is for the stomach. It's good. But don't you know, he says, God will destroy both. The body was made uh, to be uh, honored and in its right context, um, God's provided pleasure for our body. Uh, but he says, immorality he says, uh, is something God doesn't want us to indulge in. And he wants us to overcome those desires. Well, you know, I'm not here to preach to you today. And I know um, some of us are, are going to be making resolutions for the new year to maybe cut back on certain indulgences. But there's a great pattern of prayer that we can ask uh, for God's help in using. And it was something Pastor Tobitz gave us as a reminder, I think about a year ago from uh, the book of Mark, chapter 11. And there's a pattern that, that we're given through that uh, gospel 
which begins with thanksgiving. It's always so powerful to be grateful and give thanks to God, just taking a moment of gratitude and saying, God, I realize you've provided everything I need. The next breath that I will take, uh, the food. Jesus was quick to warn us in Matthew 6, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat, what you'll wear. Don't give it a lot of thought. And we tend to, don't we? We worry, especially in today's uh, political climate. You know, what's gonna, who's going to take care of me? Small businesses are going under. and But uh, God is still in control. I just wanted to remind you of that. But begin by thanking the Lord. And that's a great connection. It clears the path, I guess you could say, to God. The second thing is ask God by his Holy Spirit, who is now active, and he is the agent restraining things in the world from getting too out of control. You say, well, it's already out of control. And perhaps it looks that way. But God sees everything and nothing's rocked him off of his throne. Uh, the second step here after Thanksgiving is, Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you from his word. We say many times, I don't understand that scripture is just uh, maybe too difficult to apply. You know, that's a prayer that God's waiting and wanting to answer. Ask him by his Holy Spirit to help you understand his word. He's your counselor. What does a counselor do? It lis he listens. She listens very intently. And she uh, comforts. Many times she highlights things that we need to work on. We need to trust that God is our almighty counselor. Then read a portion of scripture that you believe God has led you to and that may apply to your circumstances and take notes because the Holy Spirit's teaching you. Again, uh, have something to write down what it is that you're seeing in the scripture and how it might apply to you. And if you still don't have an answer, we'll just keep writing down. You know, uh, in that quiet time, I believe God is he's speaking and he wants to let us know. He doesn't want his children to just be without any help. And then the last thing is to um, just continue to pray and ask God um, to lead you um, through, through times of thoughtful reflection. Um, again, where that scripture is going to take you and how he wants to apply it to your life and just give him the control. Um, you know, I think when we start to fall in line with God's a perfect purpose for us. We will be free from addiction. We'll enjoy things in their right uh, place, uh, in the right amounts. My great grandma always used to say, and she lived to be in her late 90s, she said, everything in moderation, dear. Yeah, it's okay uh, to enjoy the things of this world, but don't become so world-minded and body-minded that we lose track of the good things that God has for us. I can't remember the place in scripture, but Paul once talked about addiction. The word isn't, isn't in the Bible, addict, addict or addiction. But he said in the way that you're going to be uh, controlled by, let's say, this um, thing, uh, maybe wine, maybe whatever the excess thing is, he says, I wish that you'd be that way about God. In other words, be addicted. If you're going to be addicted to something, be addicted to God. I know that's maybe easy to say, hard to do. But the same manner that you would think about running to the old wells that you've dug for yourself that bring you pleasure, why not say, God, I know you have a better alternative, and that might be a beautiful, clean fountain instead of a muddy old well or cistern. And then ask him, the same way that I would have gotten filled and uh, drunken perhaps in the old days, let me be filled with you. Let me uh, allow you to take control of every part of my aspect of my life, mind, body, soul, and spirit. That's a prayer again that he's waiting to answer. I just uh, ask the Lord to bless you today, wherever you're at. I'm not condemning. I'm not judging anyone. Past, I probably could count six homeless people out on the road as I drove into work. And I know I'm only one paycheck away from being like they are. And I don't judge uh, it might have been addiction that brought them to that where they're at. Uh, it might not be. It might be something we don't know what. But I'm praying for them. I'm praying for you. And just remember, at the foot of the cross, it's level ground. Not one of us are higher or lower than the other. God hates if we look down our nose at someone else. It's one of the things he, uh, he, he says is an abomination. So uh, be blessed today. I call you blessed, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful end of this year and a beginning for a new year. And uh, I'll talk with you again soon. Bye for now.